and members of the diplomatic corps, Honorable uh, Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, my colleague cabinet ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols duly and respectfully observed. We are here gathered on a very important and auspicious occasion. We are here to scrutinize and carefully observe one of the most fundamental pillars in any democracy. Justice is administration and application. If I may respectfully ask this rhetorical question, what is justice? The Oxford Dictionary of Law by Elizabeth A. Martin, M.A. Oxford, authoritatively dis defines justice thus, a moral ideal that the law seeks to uphold in the protection of rights and punishment of wrongs. The appropriate Latin maxim here that expresses similar sentiments is ubi jus ibi remedium, where there is law, there must be a remedy. Our, our nation, the Gambia, the national anthem of which says inter alia, that justice guide our actions towards the common good. This simply means that the attitude of one Gambian to another or one inhabitant of the Gambia to another must be based on just or fair conduct. And this would go a long way in promoting the general welfare of all people living in the Gambia. Creating and sustaining access to justice. It is axiomatic that there are diverse ways of creating and sustaining access to justice, particularly in the Gambia. But due to time constraints, I am going to expatiate on only three of them, namely, one, legal aid, two, pro bono work, and uh, three, respecting the 1997 constitutional provisions. Legal aid, what is legal aid? The term legal aid in the present Gambian context means that whenever a person has been charged with a criminal or capital, especially a capital offense, and he or she is unable to hire the professional services of a lawyer or a defense counsel to defend him or her, it, it is the responsibility of the state to step in and provide such essential service. To go down memory lane, historically, the provision of legal aid was governed by the Poor Persons Defense Act, 1993, which has now been repealed and replaced by the Legal Aid Act, CAP 607, of the Revised Laws of the Gambia, 2009. More importantly, Section 24.3 of the 1997 Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia states as follows, provided that where a person is charged with an offense which, is, which carries a punishment of death or imprisonment for life, that person should be entitled to legal aid at the expense of the state. It is of paramount legal importance to highlight the legal fact that as far as the present law of the Gambia is concerned, legal aid is strictly applicable only to criminal cases and not civil cases. It is most likely that in the near future, legal aid in the Gambia will also extend to those areas covering civil cases. Pro bono work. The term pro bono work means that lawyers are expected 
under normal circumstances, to render professional legal service to people or their clients gratis, that is free of charge, due to financial constraints on the part of such people. Although some lawyers do sympathize and empathize with some of their clients by doing pro bono work for them, nonetheless, the rate at which this is presently being done in the Gambia should be significantly increased. If this is done, it will go a long way in cr creating and sustaining access to justice. And uh, this will dispel the myth that justice is a commodity for the rich and powerful who are financially able to hire the professional services of top senior lawyers who usually ask for their pound of flesh, if I may quote William Shakespeare, before they render any professional service to their clients. Now, respecting the 1997 constitutional provisions, Chapter 4 of the, Gambia, of the Gambia's 1997 constitution is entitled Protection of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms. Perhaps the longest section of this important chapter are sections 24 and section 19. Section 24 deals with the provision of secure protection of the law and fair play. Section 19 deals with protection of rights to personal liberties. These important sections have, copiously pro have copious provisions which inter alia seek to protect personal liberty and the rights of all Gambians and non-Gambians alike living in the country. It goes without saying that if all the law enforcement agencies in the Gambia respect these important constitutional provisions, this will also go a long way in creating and sustaining access to justice in the Gambia. One of the major impediments in the, Gambia, in the Gambia's judiciary have been the perennial backlog of cases. The Gambia's judiciary, under the able and dynamic leadership of the present Honorable Chief Justice, must be warmly congratulated <laughs> for working very hard in order to now make a thing of the past which the unflinching support and technical assistance of hurricane judges from the Commonwealth Secretariat in London. All this, of course, is through the dynamism and uh, academic prowess of the Chief Justice, whose aim at all times is to take this noble profession to the ultimate level of excellence. <laughs> at this juncture, kindly permit me to conclude my speech by wishing all distinguished and learned participants at this important presentation of the Gambia Judiciary Forum, successful and fruitful deliberation. I thank you all for your kind and undivided attention. May God bless you all. May God bless our beloved country, the Gambia, and may peace and love continue to reign in our hearts. Thank you very much. So thank you for that speech. In the program, my Lord the Chief Justice, the program is slightly changed. May I now please invite the Honorable Chief Justice, Honorable Emmanuel, Emmanuel A. Ajim, to deliver the keynote address. My Lord. Our Excellency. The Vice President Republic of the Gambia and Minister for Women Affairs, Aja Dr. Aisha Tunjai Seidi. <laughs>